Hi guys, it's Artyom, and today we will try a little bit new format. We will just read the paper as it is, and we'll try to understand what is going on there. Today's paper title is VectorNet, Encoding HD Maps and Edging Dynamics from Vectorized Representation. It's a paper from Google Research and Waymo, and the Waymo is a sub-department of Google, which is responsible for autonomous driving. And in this paper, the main problem is how to predict the future motion of all other cars on the road. And this is necessary because autonomous vehicles need to know what other cars on the road would do in the next few seconds to be able to plan accordingly. Let's start. Classical approach for this task is to use all the data which you have like the data set collected using the LIDARs. Uh, it can register all the cars and all the objects on the road and convert it to 2D coordinates. And we can visualize it on the map using the rasterization. And the classical approach here is to use this rasterized views as normal images and train CNNs to predict uh, the future motion of a car based on a series of these snapshots represented by rasterized images. You can take, for example, 50 different images at different time steps with a target car in the center and add the network to predict the future five seconds of the movement for this car. But as you can see, uh, these kind of rasterizations are quite sparse and a lot of empty spaces and only few information which is represented on this, on this image is uh, really necessary and is really informative. And that's why the researchers wanted to optimize it a little bit. And the reasonable representation here is just using a vectorized uh, representation instead of pixels. So for example, every car and the trajectory of this car is represented by a series of vectors which all together combined to represent the trajectory. Then their road lanes also represent by several vectors here. And other objects like traffic lights or crosswalks are also represented by vectors. And since it's not pixels anymore, we need to learn a graph representation instead of just normal convolutional neural networks which learn representation of uh, local patches of the images. And so Let's look at the at this example. We have such an input here, and then every vector first we want to represent by some initial features. And for us, it would be starting coordinates, ds, then end coordinates, de. Then we'll also encode attribute, which would be class type. For lane, would be road lane. For the agent's trajectory, it would be edge trajectory. For crosswalk, it's another type. So it's basically the class of the object. And an ID, unique number for every object. And so we have this uh, quadruple of scholars for every vector, like for every single vector here. Since these vectors can be grouped in polylines, which represent the single object, so we want to calculate the single feature for every polyline. And you can see here is how they are grouped together and how to calculate these features is shown on another image. So let's say we have here one, two, three, four, five, six different vectors, which are all part of the same polyline. Let's say it's some car uh, moving around and having such a trajectory. So it's six vectors. Every vector is encoded uh, with quadruple, which I just described at the beginning. And then we use a fully connected layer here, uh, which takes every individual input vector and converts it to some transformed uh, features here. Features. And then we have two streams. First, we take max pooling, which is permutation invariant aggregation. For simplicity, authors propose to use just max pooling. It's just maximum for every vector here, coordinate wise. And then this max pool feature is concatenated to every single feature here, like this plus this, and if we get this, then we can concatenate this one plus this one, we get this vector and so on. And so here we get the final output features. And then we can repeat this process again. So to send this again at the beginning, and we can stack several blocks of the same type 
one on top of each other. At the end, we will get a representation for every single vector concatenated with the global information. So we kind of encode both local and global information for every vector. But at the end, we are not really interested in the features of individual vectors. And that's why for the polyline, we want to compute a single feature. And that's why when we have a feature vector for every individual vector, we just take max pooling and just get a single feature vector for entire polyline. And so this max pool features are already represented here. And so let's say we have K different poly polylines, K different objects on the current scene. And these objects, they kind of interact between each other. They influence each other. Let's say we have a crosswalk here and then the trajectory ends just behind the crosswalk and we need to predict what happens next. And of course, if there is a crosswalk, it will affect the speed, it will affect the direction because the, like, for example, the possible directions could be to the right and straight ahead and not to the left. And that's why the features of the crosswalk and the uh, road lane here would affect the prediction for the current agent trajectory. And that's why for simplicity, the authors model the interactions between all the polylines as a fully connected graph. So every polyline depends on any other, all, all other polylines. And now they want to aggregate these features all together and to compute like the final features for every polyline, which would also account for the higher order relationships between these objects. And to do this, they use self-attention. So basically, it's just a simple transformer and they use, I guess, only a single uh, self-attention layer. So they, they have, as you usually have in self-attention, you have query vectors, you have key vectors, and you have uh, value vectors. So these are just feature vectors of every single vector after some linear projection. And so in this way, every query here is every, is every individual object, and it can be attended to every other object on the scene to encode the relationship between these objects. After that, after we use the self-attention, we get a new features defined in this paper as PI. And these new features, they already encode the higher order interactions on the polyline node features with global interaction graph, so relationship between different objects. And after that, they just uh, take phi stretch, which is just multi-layer perceptron, for example, one or two fully connected layers stacked together, which just taking these features as input and predicting already future coordinates of specific car or agent on the road. So that's it, it's a pretty simple architecture and it requires less parameters than CNN and also authors argued that it also can be trained a little bit faster than CNNs. And they had various ablation studies. One of the interesting ablation studies here is that uh, they used only the map vectors and they didn't use the vector representation of other agents on the road. So basically they didn't care about uh, the actions of other agents. You already get some decent performance, but if you also add feature representations of other agents on the road and you allow them to affect the future trajectory of the current agent, then you can improve even further. Here in this table, they had several baselines using CNNs with ResNet 18 backbone. And so the, the computation demand is quite high and also a lot of parameters. And the proposed vector net is much smaller, much smaller, and it requires uh, less operations per second and also achieves better results. There is one more trick which also supplied for training. It's a usual trick, which is used for training language models when you have uh, different different words so so to speak in the sentence and you just drop one word in the sentence and as a network to predict what was at this place and the same principle was used in this paper but instead of words here are the objects on the map and they just arbitrarily delete one object for example they can delete the middle lane here and just uh, substitute the feature of this polyline with some placeholder and they just ask the network to predict what was on this place. And this allows the network to adapt and to like to gain some prior knowledge on the structure of possible scenes and to understand that, for example, if you have very wide road here and you have lanes on the left and on the right and then the most likely that there is another road lane in the middle so this all improves the training and this another loss which was also used 
when they train their model. So this is the auxiliary loss for dropping arbitrary nodes. And this is just regression loss for every trajectory. And if you use this auxiliary loss, you can see that you get like 0.05 improvement. So this is without this auxiliary loss. And this is with auxiliary loss, which is pretty nice. If you look at the results here, they have some visualizations. Let's say we have a car. This is our agent for which we want to predict. This is the history of this agent. So it was moving from here to here for some time. Uh, all the green dots uh, here and here are just other cars on the road, other agents. And the purple here is the ground truth trajectory and what the network predict is blue, which is quite reasonable, I think. And on the right, authors visualized attention weights between the representation of the current car trajectory like the historical one and all other objects uh, on the scene. And you can see that the highest attention score is for the lanes, which correspond to the approximately same direction as the ground truth trajectory. So these, these are uh, road lanes which have the highest attention score. So that's basically it. Simple idea. So we go from pixel level representation to vector representation, and this improves the training and it's a more concise representation. As it was stated on Google's blog post that they already tried deploying this kind of method in, in the Waymo cars. Of course, it's not perfect yet, but I think it's like a nice direction for future work. Thanks for listening. Please write a couple of nice words in the comments if you like this episode. If you didn't like something, just let me know which aspects of the video could be improved and I will try to make it better next time. Please like the video. See you next time.